Hi, thanks for clicking on this video. This is a three part series of which this is part two, which need to be really watched in chronological order. So if you haven't watched part one, a little icon is going to appear in the corner where you can click on that and watch part one first, and then you can come to this video and it will all make sense. So in the first video, we talked about playing by process and the benefits of doing that. Now, a big part of playing by process is having a routine. Now, most people just think about pre-shot routines, and that's a big part of it for sure, but actually there's a lot more to it than that. And when they get into that in this video, why is routine so important? Well, routine brings familiarity and comfort from doing the same things all the time, which is especially useful when you start to feel nervous. Playing golf, just practicing like today, then I make sure that I go through the exact same pre-shot routine, which we'll get into a little bit later. But on competition day, there's also other types of routine that you need to do, on which I do, which is I arrive at the same time, you know, an hour before my tee off every single time, regardless of whether I'm teeing off first thing in the morning or last thing in the afternoon. I get here an hour before, I go onto the practice range that we've got here at Pleasanton, I go through a series of going through my bag from lob wedge through wedge, eight iron, six iron, I let a hybrid, I let a few drivers, and then I come back down the bag, usually hit some eight irons, and then finish off with just a few little lob wedges. I then go to the practice chipping green. I just hit a few nice little chip shots, just to get that nice feeling of the chips being struck nicely. Only there for about 10 minutes. I then go to the pro shop, sign in, get my card, go to the putting green, do some long puts just to try and get used to the pace of the greens, finish with holding some nice sort of five footers, hold three of those in a row, and then I'll head to the first tee. And I do that in every single competition. And again, it's just breathing that familiarity of doing the same things all the time. Okay, so we're now gonna talk about pre-shot routine. I'm gonna show you my pre-shot routine. You can copy this if you think it's gonna work for you, but it doesn't really matter as long as you've got your own routine and you stick to it and you do exactly the same thing every single time. It doesn't really matter what it is. This is my pre-shot routine. So I pick my club, make sure I've got my right club, make sure that I'm happy in my mind. I've got no indecision about that. I then stand behind it. I pick a mark just in front of my ball to line up on to make sure that I am aligned properly on my target. I then step in, take a look, look down, one last look and then go. That's right at it. That is right at it. Oh, it's a little bit short. Front of the green. It's okay though. So, and I do that on every shot. It doesn't matter whether it's a driver. It doesn't matter whether it's a short iron. It doesn't matter whether it's a chip. I do the same thing every time. And the time in between when I take that first step into the ball to when I strike the ball, I try and make sure that that's within a second of the timing. So it's just exactly the same every time. And when I feel nervous, I can fall back on this routine to just get me through and hit the shot that I want to hit. Because all I'm thinking about is the process and doing my routine. I'm not thinking about feeling nervous or the shot that is in front of me. Okay, so work out a routine that works for you and then just practice it, repeat it, repeat it, repeat it until it becomes absolutely automatic. So the only time I've got a slightly different routine is on my putting, but it's only a very slight deviation. You want to try and keep your routine on your shots and your putting as similar as possible. So on putting, I'll just come down here. So again, I stand behind the ball, I read the put, and then I visualize the put going in the hole and the line that the ball's gonna track. I then step in, I've picked, a, I've picked a target on that line by the hole. I step in, I look at that target, 
I look at the ball and I go. Didn't turn quite as much as I thought. And I do the same thing on every putt. Read the putt, visualise the line, so it's a little bit less than I thought, just outside the right, about an inch outside the right. I then have one practice stroke, look at my target, look at my ball and go. And it bobbled a little bit that one. But again, as I said in the first video, as long as I've gone through my process and I've executed it exactly as I wanted to, then I accept whether the ball goes in the hole or not because I did everything within my control and executed my routine. That's it really for this video. It's quite a simple one. Having watched part one and realized that by starting to play golf via a process is far better than playing via an outcome. And then as part of that process, getting your routines absolutely set in stone and then executing those routines as part of your process, I promise you, you will start to play nearer to your potential more often. So, you know, this doesn't matter what your handicap is. It doesn't matter what your golf swing's like. We can all think better on the golf course to help us fulfill our potential whatever that potential actually is. So, in the final part of this series, which is going to be coming up next, we're going to start then talking about playing golf at an unconscious level and with a totally free mind. And that's the final part of the jigsaw that will hopefully have us all thinking and playing better on the golf course. So until then, stay safe, enjoy your golf, and I'll see you in the next video.